welcome back to LinkedIn Logs, the jobs podcast for the website cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Welcome in episode 33. Here's the deal. This was recorded two days ago, the day it's supposed to come out. This episode was recorded. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I went through a whole 25 minutes of talking. And then. Let's say 24 minutes in. Not, not 24. Let's say, let's say 23 minutes in. I go. I look down. I have the monitor set up. Here's the... If I'm, I'm looking over here. If you're watching the video. You're seeing me look at what the camera sees. Here's Google Chrome. Here's Notion with my notes. And right here in the bottom right-hand corner is Adobe Audition. Typically... Everything works well. All right. $33 a month or $30 a month, however much I pay for Adobe Audition to record and do its thing. I got the Zoom H6. I got this microphone. Everything should work. I look down 23 minutes in and it's not recording. And I go, what (laughs) and it throws me off my game (laughs) and then i see i look at the uh i mean obviously obs is recording but i don't see the audio waveforms for either audition or obs moving at all and i'm like what the heck i finish out the episode because i go maybe it's still recording audio and I go, well, audition, audition crashed, which it did. I had to close it and open it back up. Audition crashed, and I go, maybe, perhaps, the audio still recorded on OBS. It did not. So I did a whole episode. And also, also, I opened up Audition, and it had recorded 30 seconds. 38 seconds, excuse me. 38 full seconds. Anyway. That's what happened. So now I did I did a whole thing. I did a whole thing yesterday. I was so funny. It was a great episode. I'm not kidding. That's not me doing a put on. I'm going to record this. I'm not going to change my shirt. <laughs> Typically, I like to put on a little bit more. Better. This shirt says Free Ranch. It is a shirt I got from Cartoon Network. It is in reference to the Eric Andre show. I'm not going to change it. My voice sounds bad because I went to a, a very big workout class yesterday and I screamed the entire time. There's uh, it's maintenance people slamming doors around here. It just happened. It shook. It happened again. I can hear the uh, the Dutch oven on top of the oven just shaking. <sighs> and my iced coffee's wearing off. When I recorded, I was also drinking iced coffee. All right, let's get into this. I got nothing. Else. I don't. There's like truly nothing is going on. Actually, you know what? I do. I will repeat the same story. Everything you're gonna hear today is what I repeated what I said on Tuesday. It's all repeat, with the exception of the the jokes that just come off the cuff. You know, because I'm one of the funniest people in comedy. <laughs> I. uh so Ted Jaws podcast. I applied to that. Applied. I've been in the uh, in contention for a position at uh, a, 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 some type of organization, a news organization that I freelance for, which they don't remember. I made it to third or fourth round. I really, I genuinely forgot what number we're on right now. And I got I, so I, I talked to the VP, one of the VPs. He sends me an email. Hey, sorry for the delay. There's others. We're still going down. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. If I make it this far, there shouldn't be others. There should be other, maybe. And even still, it should be like, just like, uh, hey, we're, 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 we're doing this. Just give us a second. Don't, don't be so candid with it. So that's all I'm waiting on. I got nothing else. Excuse me. Jesus, my voice. 
I did wake up uh, this morning to a, uh, I got a Nest Home report, in case you're wondering. Also, my watch continues to be breaking. This is, I'm wearing a Garmin Vivoactive H4, uh, and a, a couple of months ago, the screen just popped off while in the middle of me boxing. The screen just popped off. I looked down and see, oh, what is that microchip looking? Oh, my God, it's the screen. <laughs> I plugged it back in. There was enough glue on the rim to like keep it, hold it steady. Uh, a couple, like two days later, it popped off again. And I said, all right, I have to glue this thing. So I have Gorilla Glue. I glued it. And then like three days ago, it popped off again. <laughs> This is like after months of like it popped up. I was like, oh my God. So I had to I had to do more globs of glue. But anyway, uh the first time it popped off, the backlight just stopped working. I plugged in I plugged in the the where the chip was supposed to be. Anyway, whatever, doesn't matter. So now I can't even, I can't see anything in the dark. <laughs> I used to use it as a flashlight sometimes, doesn't work. Other than that, I've just been applying the jobs, doing the same thing over and over again. I did. Oh, but yeah, what I was saying this morning, I got an email. Um, I wake up at three fifty-five, so I can work out, go to the gym, get my day started. I got an email this morning at three twenty-seven a.m. Uh, for a position at CNN that I applied for, interactive developer, which I am well equipped to do. And it was like, uh, you didn't get the job. <laughs> Don't email me at 327. I don't care if Workday did that. Don't email me at 327 in the morning. Do it at 8. 8 to 8. That's when you can get me. Okay. Now this comes from New York Times. Written by Claire Kane Miller and John Katz. What researchers discovered when they sent 80,000 fake resumes to U.S. jobs. Now, this comes from the National Bureau of Economic Research. They did a discrimination report card. I've linked that in the notes of this episode. A group of economists recently performed an experiment on around 100 of the largest companies in the country where they got 80,000 resumes, roughly, and sent them out over the course of 2019 and uh, 2021. And they changed applicants' names so to suggest that they were black or white Male or female. They released the name of the company. This is, uh, this is last week, I believe. On average, they found employers contacted the presumed white applicants 9.5% more often than the presumed black applica- applicants. <laughs> black applicants. <laughs> it was different between all every single firm and every single industry. But there were two companies that favored white applicants over black applicants more than the others, in some cases significantly. AutoNation and GPC, which is Genuine Parts Company, which also sells under auto parts under um, Napa Auto Parts. AutoNation contacted presumed white applicants 43% more often, while GPC, Genuine Parts Company, did so 33% more often. Companies with the uh, smallest racial gaps include Charter Communications, Dr. Pepper, FedEx, Hilton, Kohl's, Kroger, Lowe's, Target, Cisco. Cisco with an S, S-Y-S-C-O. Now, GPC, I also told a story. This, I told this same story on the, <laughs> on the episode that is never going to be able to come out because <laughs> no audio was recorded. I had a Napa truck. I had this like giant die cast Napa truck that was like this big it was like the size of, a little bit bigger than my head top to bottom yeah big head. and it had a uh, it had a Napa hat on top of the uh the cab is that what it is where the crew sit where the people who you know uh when I drive my car I'm part of the crew uh, when Maverick gets in the car he's part of the crew whenever uh, I have a lady in there <laughs> she's part of the crew Oh, lady. <laughs> you know, I just refer, because I like little spaceships. We're little spaceships. We're zooming along down on the roads. We're going all over the places. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And uh, and that was and it it didn't do anything. It wasn't electronic, but the doors opened and the truck, uh, the bed for the truck, not the bed, the door, the door for the bed opened up and everything. It had tires. You had to reinflate the tires. <laughs> there was a spare under the t- under the bed. <laughs> had to get out a little uh, 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 tire wrench set. <laughs> yeah, get some road flares. <laughs> Call Triple A, <laughs> guys. I gotta. I'm, I'm changing the tire. <laughs> Nowadays, they only these little diecast cars. They only come with uh, uh, portable reinflators. <laughs> it fills it up with gel or whatever, <laughs> soap. You're welcome for that. That's brand new. This study, this type of study, is an audit study, and, uh, and like I said, it was eighty thousand resumes to ten thousand jobs over a two-year span in 19, uh, from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty-one. Three years, I guess, whatever. The results demonstrate how entrenched employment discrimination is in parts of the U.S. labor market, and the extent to which Black workers start behind in certain industries. Some industries, including uh, food. And trans freight and transport, as I mentioned, had uh, a, a lack of racial bias. Kroger, Mondelez, FedEx, Ryder, Cisco, McLean Company. Whereas compared to GPC, Genuine Parts Company, I think that's what it was called, and Auto Nation, both were like, mm, we'll go with the white sounding ones. The names that you use for the uh, for the whites and the blacks for the uh, for the resumes, not a fan. <laughs> for the white ones, they used Todd and Allison, and for black ones, they used Le- Lakeisha and Leroy. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I don't know why I did that. I just put my hand on the mic. <laughs> I've never done that before. I've recorded hundreds of episodes between three, uh, four, five, uh, five podcasts, four podcasts, I think. And I've never, well, five. There's one that people will never, ever hear again. <laughs> the Chad White podcast will never, ever be released again. I still have the audio for it. This is a, it was a precursor to the constitutionals. The study includes 97 firms. The jobs the researchers applied to were entry level, which didn't require a college degree or substantial work experience. They also tested other characteristics protected by law, like age and sexual orientation. So, you know, when you apply to a job, it says, uh, wait, sexual orientation? Oh, like, uh, 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 like gender. Okay. Right? Yeah, gender. I was going to say... <laughs> You apply to a job and it's like, are you gay or straight? Are you queer? You got a little bit of sugar in you? It was a joke. I did it in that voice to make sure it was a joke. Don't cancel me. They sent up to a thousand applications to each company applying for as many as 125 jobs per company and locations nationwide to try to uncover uncover patterns and companies, various operations versus uh, uh, isolated inc- instances. Then they tracked whether the employer contacted the applicant within 30 days. So there's bias against black names. There's bias, bias against gender, age, and uh, uh, LGBTQ status. But on average, companies did not treat male and female applicants differently. This aligns with other research showing that gender discrimination against women is rare in entry-level jobs and starts later in their careers. How about, let's do an undercover boss where um, there's, a, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a, a man that owns like a bunch of, uh, I don't know, like he's like the CEO or maybe like just a higher up president or higher up vice president or something at like Ann Taylor Loft, the company that owns that <laughs> And then he goes undercover as a new worker there, but he's in drag. <laughs> I think that'd be very funny. I think that'd be very, very funny. <laughs> oh, speaking of Ann Taylor, 
However, when companies did favor men, especially in manufacturing, or women, mostly at apparel stores, the biases were much more, biases were much larger than for race. Builders first source contacted presumed male applicants more than twice as often as female ones. Essentia, which owns brands like Ann Taylor, contacted women 66% more than men. I'm just saying, it'd be very funny to like see a, just like this, this older 60 year old man who's never done anything like that in his life, just dress up in drag and then work at an Ann Taylor loft for a week. The consequences of being female differed by race. The differences were small, but being female was a slight benefit for white applicants and a slight penalty for black applicants. Researchers also tested several other characteristics protected by law with a smaller number of resumes. They found there was a small penalty for being over the age of 40. There was no overall penalty for using non-binary pronouns. Being gay, as indicated by including them, uh, resulted in a slight penalty for white applicants, but benefited for black applicants because they want to hit two birds with one stone. Oh, we got a queer and a black. There are things that companies can do to reduce 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 uh, 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 biases. When I when I, I know this when um, Sam B had her late night show Full Frontal, they did a blind application system or blind packet system. So your name wasn't on the packet, your resume wasn't on the packet. It was literally just your packet. And by packet, uh, when you when you write when you. Uh, I mean, the, for better or worse, when you apply, this is not how television is, but when you apply, the word I'm using is, is not how television is. When you apply to be on a TV show, when, you want, when, you, when you're a writer, you have to submit a packet. That's your application. And uh, the packet is essentially you're pitching an episode of the show for free. You don't, do, you don't get paid to write a packet. You can spend two weeks on a packet and you won't get paid for it. Two weeks, eight hours a day, which you would never do. No one ever does that because it's a weekly show. Or if you're doing, you know, if you're working, if you're trying to submit a packet for a late show, then that's a that's a thing you should be able to do in a day or two. Anyway, so your packet's going to have like the monologue. It's going to have a desk piece. It's going to have, you know, if it's if it's Fallon, it's going to have games or whatever. Or or, or if it's a uh, Kimmel, you're going to have a man on the street segment, whatever. Uh, you're so you're essentially just doing twenty pages for free. 20 or so. And for Samantha B's Full Frontal on TBS, uh, full, full Frontal with Samantha B, they did a blind packet system where instead of including their name and resume and like where they've been before, like, oh, I wrote on The Daily Show. I, uh, I, um, I wrote for Santa Buddies. I wrote that movie. I wrote Santa Buddies, <laughs> Santa Paws or whatever. Anyway, uh, then... So what? So they just got the packet and they knew, oh, this person is funny, period. Ashley Nicole Black, she's now uh, basically more so a producer, but she was a writer and kind of a performer for different shows. But she was able to write on that show, the Pat Castles from um, College Humor. He submitted a packet was on that show. I like I knew I knew most of the writers, not personally. I knew most of the writers because I I am in, I'm entrenched in this world and uh, uh, of, of writing and comedy and things like that. And so when you, when you see those people, you, they got there based on their own merits and not based on the the uh, matriarchy. Look at me of the <laughs> of the system for uh, for television for for creating television. And it turned out that they, I think they had a, a mostly female writer, writer's room. It just happened to be that way. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think they did. Amy Hogart was a correspondent on that show. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. But one, but the uh, a way that you can reduce discrimination or have less discrimination is a centralized... HR operation. The researchers recorded voice messages, voicemail messages 
that the fake applicants received. When a company's calls uh, came from fewer individual phone numbers suggesting that they were originating from a central office, there tended to be less bias. When they came from individual hiring managers at local stores or warehouses, there was more. These messages often sound frantic and informal, asking if the applicant should start the next day, for example. So what they're saying is, when you have a high, when you have an HR department that's doing the hiring, and they're in the company, and there's four or five people working there, and the hiring manager, or the you know the, the person doing the hiring is coming in and saying, "Hey, Chad, we want to hire you for this role." Then, uh, and they hear what I sound like, they're going to be, you know, I sound like a a, a, a 19, <laughs> I sound like Fraser Light, I sound like Diet Fraser. So, so, so when they call, they're like, "Oh, this guy, oh, he sounds very smart. He sounds like he's got a good head on his shoulders. We're gonna hire him." Versus, if they if they hear somebody else who's a little bit more looser in their dialogue, uh, is one way to put it. <laughs> uh, then then they're gonna be like, "This person's not gonna be a fit for us," even if that person has uh, what they're looking for. Versus. They go to you. You, you have a like a, an outside hiring department who is able to, who is this is their job is to help hire people, as opposed to HR, which is carrying many hats and is just like a person. Then you're gonna have a little bit of uh, you're gonna have less discrepancies there. Is that the word I'm looking for? Discrepancies. I don't know. And then you also want to diversify the pool of people who apply, as well. Let's get women into into some labor jobs. I worked with plenty of women when I was at uh, UPS working in a factory. I worked with plenty of women. Anyway, that's it. That's the episode. I hope to God. I mean, I see the waveforms moving. So we'll see if it's been uh, if if the if the issue's been um, worked out. Listen, if you like what you heard here. I'll tell you, this was a better episode compared to the Tuesday episode. Oof, what a stinker. Or maybe it's a good thing to have it. If you like what you heard here and you want to see more, head to the website cpluscomedy.com where you can see me talk to so many famous people. It's insane. You'll be like, why does this guy not get paid? And I'll go, hire me. <laughs> if you want to see my portfolio, go to chadcwhite.com. You can also see a video version of this show as well as the other podcasts on youtube.com slash C plus comedy. The other podcasts include the Constitutionals podcast, which is the entertainment business news podcast, as well as uh, Late Night Lately, which is the Late Late Night show show. Subscribe to those wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at C plus comedy, me at Chad Black White. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'm Italian. No, no. Goodbye. Uh, ciao. Arrivederci. Uh, ciao, bella. <laughs>